What is up guys, DGA here. We are here back with No Man's Sky. Built my cool base recently as you can see. Might not be the best, but it's something. So here's what I'm here to talk about today. As you can see, this is a lush planet, very lush. And if you look at my meter on the bottom left, you can see that there are no extra elemental effects on the planet. No heat, no cold, no extra radiation, nothing. It's just very low. Uh, um, life support draining planet like your life support doesn't go that fast it goes very slowly and when you're moving slowly and building stuff uh, y essentially you can go for hours with just a single uh, fill of life support so here is how I found this planet as you can see I made my home base because it's easier to build home bases in these kind of planets you have to be stay out for hours you have to mine for hours to go farm carbon for hours and it's much easier to find a planet like this then go to a planet which has heat or something and you have to keep running inside recharge your life support or you build one of these things or uh, a deflector or a thermic layer sigma which you have to keep recharging again as you can see these two were from my previous planet which had a lot of radiation and as you can see they're both drained out so here's how you find a planet like this 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 took me probably uh, sorry not this one where's my planet where's my planet yeah this took me probably around two minutes to find. I opened the galactic map, my map, found a star and then I flew in and I found this planet. So that's how fast it was. Uh, it's actually a moon but uh, still it's it's very lush. So here's how you find moons or planets like these. Now this has everything to do with just your galactic map. You don't need you don't even need to use fuel until you've actually decided what kind of planet you want to go to. Now there's four different types of planets, yellow, blue, red and green. Now I fir at first I thought yellow was like a hot planet, blue was very cold, red was very hot and green was toxic. I was wrong. So as you can see most of the uh, system or galaxy is covered by yellow, star uh, yellow uh, stars, okay I can say stars I guess, yellow stars. Uh, I keep saying planets instead of systems so I'm just going to use the word star. So they're mostly covered by yellow stars, there's a lot of greens and reds but very less blues but this particular spot I'm in has a lot of blues for some reason that's actually pretty cool. Anyway, coming back to the section we were talking about, here's uh, how you actually find and uh, differentiate between these things. Now each of these planets have a letter association, each of these, I said planets again, each of these stars have a letter, as a letter associated with them. The first one, let's not pay heed to the second letter. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything but the first letter and the number are what mean uh, something and what you you, act, you are going to use to find the planet you need so we have F for yellow systems F's and G's will be yellow systems uh, there will be E's for green systems K's and M's for the red system and O's and B's for the blue system oh, 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 oh. O's and B's for the blue system. Now here's what this essentially means and we'll also talk about what the numbers next to them mean. Now these planets or sorry these systems or stars are near are numbered based on sorry their heat is based on Kelvin units and uh, that's how it is based in real life too. The O system is 30,000 Kelvin units and above and B systems too that is the blue systems are usually 30,000 and above or the B ones if they're B if they're O they're 30,000 and above-ish if they're B they're from 10,000 to 30,000 so uh, apart from what they look like blue and cool these are the hottest systems and that's how you find very hot planets. Now, F system is uh, F system F is uh, yellow sorry F system F and G would be around 5000 to 7500, G is around 5000 to 600 and F is around 6000 to 700. E is currently unknown but we're gonna guess it's somewhere between G and K. Here's what K is. K is the red one, right? Where the hell is it? Yeah, here you go. We have M's and K's for the red one. Now K means 3700 to 5200 and M means 2400 to 3700. Now these are very cold systems. Now you're gonna find lots of cold planets there. Now here's essentially what, it doesn't exactly mean that you're gonna 100% find these planets, but here's essentially what 
they actually mean. Yellow planets, the most notable resources you're going to find are Mordite and Coprite. Most of the planets here will be lush planets and uh, you just need your warp reactor, normal warp reactor to go to these kind of planets. Okay, And they are the best chance for lush planets. Uh, they don't have any unique resources but if you find a lush planet you have the chance of getting Coprite or the other one I said, Mordite. And uh, they are very sparse, uh, rare material, they're very uh, not much. So since they have lush planets, I guess that's what they're making up for. And you have around 0 to, zero to 1 or 2 exotic material per planet. Then you have the red system. Uh, these require you to make the warp reactor sigma. Oh, sorry, where the hell is it? Yeah, there you go. Warp reactor sigma. These let you. This is what lets you hyperdrive to red systems. Uh, they have an average chance for lush planets. They're not that high chance of lush planet. Uh, their unique resource is rubium. Uh, they have some uncommon rare materials. It's not that sparse as the yellow system and they're not everywhere either. So you have very a little chance of finding rare materials. And uh, uh, they also usually have around one or two planets with rare materials. But I wouldn't suggest because usually it's just rubium and nothing else. Uh, then there's green systems which requires warp reactor tau. Sorry, tau and these have a larger chance for lusher planets okay uh, even though i say larger they're not as large as yellow planets they have a larger chance for lush planets but not as much as yellow systems uh, their unique resource is called viridium uh, they usually have some rare rare materials and commonly spread amongst planets uh, they're also around not much but uh, they have a couple planets usually with these exotic materials and then you have the blue system which requires the warp reactor theta. Now warp reactor theta lets you jump to blue planets. Uh, they have the second largest chance for lush planets, yellow being the top. And then you have your unique resource, cymatogen, or I don't know how you um, say it, cymatogen, cymatogen. Anyway, the rare material there are everywhere. If you drop into one of these systems and you went into a planet, you'd find rare materials everywhere and usually they have one or two rare materials per planet like as you can see these planets they usually have one the temerium and as you can see this one if i were to scan this one you can see ferridium and this one doesn't even have anything don't even worry about it see so but if i were to move to a blue system i'd find tons of rare materials like i could find two purple materials per planet and there'll be more stuff like albinium pearls or uh, the cubes, the core wax cubes and stuff like that. Oh, am I getting scanned? You know what? Let's let's warp to a blue pan planet. System, sorry. I keep saying planet. Anyway, so that's what the system colors essentially mean. And that is what the heat in them means. Okay, as you can see the blue planets landed on one if I were to scan this planet where do I scan it if I were to scan this planet as you can see cymatogen is present just like I told you one or two planets over here are bound to have a rare material where is the other planet wait is that a one planet system it's a one planet system oh my god let's move to a better planet a system sorry Again, one planet. This is another problem with the blue ones. You won't find many planets on them. This one. There we go. This should be much better. And my appetite was enough. So, that's what they essentially mean. The numbers in them, what they mean is, uh, again, heat based. The number, if there is F and a 7. It means in that F range, the F's heat range that is 6000 to 7500 heat. Uh, oh, great, I don't have sync. 6000 to 7500 heat. Um, you're gonna have uh, 7 would be the end of it, like it would be around close to 7000. 10 would be 7000, and 1 would be 6000. Now, my home planet, the other, the one I was previously in, if I can somehow find it. My own planet was a uh, F 
one I believe or it was a F5 and this essentially means that it's a F which means it's not that hot it's around 6000 to 7000 temperature and it's a 2 or a 4 I believe which means it's not at the extreme heat in that particular family too and yellows have the highest chance for lush planet so I decided it doesn't have that much temperature and it has a higher chance of lush planets so let's move there and I moved there and the first thing I scanned was a lush planet it didn't have any extra resources so I thought it might not be that good but I landed on the system because it had a habitable base just to check how it is and it ha ended up being a lush planet and if I wanted to farm extra rare materials I would go to blue planets blue systems because they are very rare very abundant rare uh, materials most of the farming I do for building my base is done in the blue systems because they're easy to find and they're um, easy to find um, elements on them now this essentially does not work 100% of the time this is what the game uh, uh, system makes them mean and uh, I can't guarantee you you will find a lush planet 100% of the time when you go to yellow star I've been to several yellow stars with no lush planets and just barren planets but maybe maybe in 1.1 the foundation update they made this change where uh, your planets are actually what they mean now now once this loads if I were to go to the ship mount it go on space I'll show you why I chose the system and what made me choose the system I right. so now you can see that this is a F1F F1F F1, F meaning F as in 6000 to 7000 heat and then one meaning that is in the 6000 range itself 6700 6, maybe 6000 ish so that meant that this planet is going to be very moderate temperature not too hot not too cold and it would be very habitable and I reached there and uh, it was just perfect I just stayed there forever uh, I mean not forever I built a habitable base there and uh, I feel like this is going to be my base planet for a very, very long time and I use as you can see it has a very good amount of blues and reds and greens around it which means I can warp to these easily and find rare elements that I need to build my base on this system so that is how you differentiate between the planets and systems in each system uh, that is just for their heat and how to find lush planets now let me tell you how you find uh, now let me tell you how you find uh, elements in such planets now this uh, as I said there's uh, 13 new elements but nine of these are from very biome specific elements now you have Kurisajin which is used to build glasses and stuff this one is usually found in cold planets then you have uh, Rigogen uh, Rigo I don't think I have any Rigogens left yeah there you go Rigogen these are found in water planets these are usually found in the oceans so just land near the edge of a uh, big land part in the ocean planets and just dive in and you should find some Rigogens they usually look like this with a stem and lights in the end then you have Cymaten do I have any Cymatens? Uh, I do not have any cemetaries. Now these are found in blue systems, mostly abundant in blue systems. Then you have Timidium. I probably don't have any Timidium, I wasted them all. But Timidiums are usually found in very toxic planets. Uh, does this one essentially give me Timidium? I thought this one gave Timidium. Let's check. Yeah, this one gives Timidium, which means this is going to be a toxic as planet. And then you have Spadonium. Spadonium is this little plant that is found, it's like a mushroom uh, that is found in uh, barren planets, very barren planets and as you know barren planets can be found in blue systems because they are the hottest. Then you have Viridium in green systems. Uh, Viridium is also used to build various stuff and Viridium can be found in blue systems. Then you have Feridium which is found in really hot planets again not barren but hot they could still have still be lush enough to be uh, hot but not uh, but not barren and then you have candesium which is from very radioactive planets not very extremely radioactive but they are from radioactive planets now just to see if I was essentially correct this planet should be toxic and it should contain timidiums on it if it is toxic when we scan from outer, outer space 
let's set it at 10 medium so let's take a look as you can see weather is gas clouds that means it's going to be extremely toxic uh, and let's just have a look at it as you can see the toxicity is high my health life support is depleting if I were to scan do we find any mediums? we do not find any mediums. yeah this is essentially how you find planets to farm for stuff farm for items and you will easily find items that you need I hope this guide helped a lot uh, this helped me build my base find my planet and just settle in within minutes and I found a particularly nice system where it's surrounded by other colored systems that I can just hop in like if I were to visit these system all these systems in a row and then just come back to my home base I don't even have to essentially uh, use my warp reactor anymore because I can just use the teleporter from my own planet and the systems and just go back and forth from them and easily easily farm anything I need so that's how you differentiate between your planet colors, heat numbers, planet letters and then what elements you find on different planets. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this guide was helpful. I'll catch you guys up right here next time. Until then, bye bye.